Hi guys, today we are again with Andrea Pongilupi, our electronics manager. Today we are going to discover with Andrea the TPMS system, a very curious system that you probably never heard about. So enjoy this lecture. Thanks Emanuele for your introduction. Today I'm going to tell you what a TPMS is, how it works and how the Federation check its data. Today we'll try to answer this and other curiosities. Great, let's start. TPMS IR. TPMS stands for Tire Pressure Measurement System and IR stands for Infrared. That kind of system allows you to read the temperature and the pressure of the air inside the tire. The IR version allows you to read also the temperature of the internal surface of the tire. There are two important reasons why TPMS is so important. Safety and performance. In 2016, after Loris Bar's crash at 290 km per hour due to tire damage, the use of TPMS has been compulsory. TPMS allows you to understand how a tire behaves to model it and consequently simulate it and predict its behavior in different scenarios. That's a great advantage to make the most of the tire. The tire pressure monitor system is usually made of two sensors, one for every tire, which transmit the data to the receiver. One SU bike, the receiver, on every vehicle. One SU garage, optional, in order to receive the data of the tire not yet mounted on the bike in warning phase in the rack. One handle, useful to read in real time the sensor data without having the motorbike connected to a PC. Both the receivers, SU bike and the garage, receive the data sent by the sensor, pack them and send them along the can line. On the bike, the can line is connected to the SU and when the bike is in the garage connected with the wiring to a PC, the electronic engineer can check in real time the data sent by the sensors. The can line of the SU garage receiver is directly connected to a different PC. The sensor perfectly fits the internal rims surface and has a valve that allows you to inflate the deflated tire with a standard eye compressor. Inside the sensor case you can find the battery, a Gore-Tex PAL to allow pressure reading without risking electronic damages, the electronic board that integrates the BMS, the battery management system, the sensors, for example, air temperature, pressure, and the tire surface temperature, the microprocessor and the radio transmitter. Some TPMS sensors read the relative humidity inside the tire too. OK, there's a sensor on every rim and every time the tire is mounted, the pairing of the ID sensor versus the ID tire is officially recorded. That allows to officially identify the data of every single tire. As previously told, the sensor has a battery and to preserve the charge, it remains in a low power consumption stage when it doesn't detect pressure a temperature over a threshold or a movement. The board inside the sensor measures the ambient temperature, the pressure and the temperature of the surface of the tire. How is it able to do this? Let's explain how it works. The ambient temperature is measured by using a particular resistor, in general a PT1000, which changes its resistivity depending on the temperature. The microprocessor reads the value of that resistivity and converts it to the corresponding temperature value. Concerning the pressure measuring, there are different methods. By measuring the variation of the resistivity of the structure or the capacitance caused by deformation. To measure the internal surface temperature of the tire, mounted on the board, you can find an array of IR sensors, or better, a single multi-spot IR sensor that allow measurement without contact. It can measure the emitted infrared radiation, which every object with a temperature above 0 Kelvin emits. The infrared radiation is the detector, which then generates an electric signal that is then converted in the corresponding temperature value by the microprocessor. 
Following the transmitting strategy of, if not used, full information at max frequency if running, the sensor sends data via radio. In order to avoid the reading of other team data, for example when bikes are running close to each other, the receiver firmware checks a table that contains all of the IDs of the sensor of the team. The SU bike and SU garage can receive data from sensor up to 5 meters or more. The sensors are self-compensated over temperature range. That means that the rate temperature is not influenced by the temperature of the environment. Think for a moment about the stresses that this sensor must endure. The centrifugal force when the bike whizzes at 316 km per hour the vibration when the bike passes over the curbs, the shocks every time the bike lowers after wheelies, and the internal temperature and humidity of the tire. Well, the sensor sends the data at a frequency of 433 MHz. What does the receiver do? After the ID check, it reads, pack and sends the data on a can line. An ECU of the Federation connected to the same CAM line receives the data and transmits it every time the motorbike crosses the finish line. The main ECU of the bike, or an external logger too, are connected to the same CAM line, but the team can read this data only when the motorbike comes back to the garage and the bike is connected to the PC. We have told that TPMS is very important for safety reasons. That's the reason why the Federation can check the pressure and temperature every time they want, by using an handheld when the bike is not running, or every time it crosses the finish line by using a system that is connected to an antenna under the tarmac. TPMS is very important in order to improve the performances too. They are tied to the behavior of the tire, so understanding how they work in every situation allows you to know the best way to use them. Thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy your ride.